Even though their appearance could make you think these suits were developed by the military, they're not. On the contrary, they are do-it-yourself at its finest. We are in New York and we'll be meeting this yellow fellow in the streets of Brooklyn. I am Brooklyn Bumblebee, the world's coolest transformer from the Michael Bay films. Peter Kokers is the one inside this outfit. The former fighter pilot is now one of the best costume builders in the world. Well, I'm, I'm a big sci-fi geek, have been since I was a kid, and I like robots. I like the robots from the Michael Bay Transformers films because they're fighting robots and they're very physical. And I'm a very physical guy myself, so I enjoy bringing them to life. As soon as Peter pops up somewhere in his costume, Everyone stares at him. Even the cops stopped doing their jobs. We got away with filming without a permit in the middle of the street. Instead, our reporter was asked to take a picture. Peter's life is all about Transformer costumes nowadays. But that wasn't always the case. The 53-year-old has seen quite a bit in his life. I was a military pilot, had many adventures, uh, risked my life many times. Um, I've been in 11 fires in my career, things related to crime, law enforcement. Now I've been in movies, <laughs> I've got to be in a movie, I'm on TV shows. And I, I try to take it in and absorb it. After half an hour in his armor, Peter is done. This one's 66. So it's like I'm carrying a person on my back the whole time we were out there today. What's quite remarkable is that the costumes are made out of common household items. Did you notice the x slicer or the telephone handsets? And this is where Peter finds his raw materials. So a place like this is a bank vault to me. I come in here and it's filled with things that are very valuable to me. For example, toilet brushes or this plastic thing. I use egg slicers in every character I build. Toilet paper holders, I use these all the time. And this is just, I find that is very interesting to me. That looks a little mechanical. And so maybe this would be something mechanical inside me. So I'll buy that. Peter purchases three to 4,000 individual parts for a complete costume. The shopkeeper should be pleased. He's a good customer of ours. Uh, he's a good man. He's a good. He's a good man. Thank you. The pleasure. See Thank you, you next week. Thank you. Thank you. It takes four to five hundred hours for Peter to build a robot out of all these parts. Almost everything is made in his kitchen. I've discovered maybe 20 different designs of egg slicers in the few years I've been doing this. You would not believe how many different shapes there are of toilet brush holders, and I use those all the time. Peter builds the larger parts like a leg or the chest armor from these trash cans. He always keeps a small supply of them handy. You never know. Today he works as a security guard and has a small robot army at home. He's currently working on his 15th combat suit. Peter makes special appearances at weddings or film premieres. His goal is to live off his art. Well, it started out just as a joke, uh, became a hobby, became the passion, and uh, became my business. I don't know where any of this will ultimately go. This is... Uh, the left arm off my Brooklyn Terminator robot as an example, but aside from the artistic issue, there's the engineering issue that all the parts have to fit. I have to be able to move around, so if I can't raise my arm, I can't put on a helmet. Peter often finds useful components in the hygiene department. Example, that's that. <laughs> toilet paper holder, toilet paper holder, toilet paper holder. <laughs> this is a shin guard. Uh, these are actually hair clippers, or hair clips, yeah. and just lots of bottle caps, uh, nothing special actually. But when it's all together, what I try to do is visually overwhelm somebody who's looking at me. So as I move quickly and they see me, they don't know what to look at. You can't pick anything out because it's just too much for you. And then whew, I move through and I'm gone. And you say, what happened? What was that? <laughs> 
what, what is it? So this is my most complex helmet. This is Brooklyn Typhoon. It was a robot from the movie Pacific Rim in 2014. This head uh, weighs about 11 kilograms. Our reporter Martin cannot resist. He has to try the helmet on. It'll give you a sore neck if you're not in shape. And your vision is pretty restricted. I can only see through here. I can't see anything on this side. I can't see my hand anymore. Or this one either. Wow. Respect. And now we can also appreciate Peter's creative eye. We notice salad spoons, hair machine attachments and even flashlights. I can try more helmets on. He has two big ones for me. Uh, I have one character, a transformer known as Ironhide. So he's all about his guns. He's basically a walking weapon system. The outfit fits our reporter perfectly. A forearm weighs a bit more than 20 kilograms. I'm, I fight like that and I do a lot of fighting, very aggressive fighting poses, but be careful. Don't hurt your shoulders. I can definitely understand why he lifts weights and goes to the gym. This weighs a total of almost 40 kilos. The helmet weighs another 10 kilos. Peter offers his costumes for sale under the name Brooklyn Robot Works. However, the prize of a suit can be that of a new car. Too bad for the kids who can't afford one. How do you like it? I really do like it. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Peter turns household items into sophisticated works of art. What comes next is a bit rougher. We leave New York and head north to Rhode Island. Somewhere in this monster costume is our new personal favorite superhero, Thomas the Petrillo. This is an Iron Man suit from the Age of Ultron. The name of this particular suit is the 44th version he's made called the Hulkbuster. Thomas walks on stilts and every step includes its own mechanical sounds. The speaker hangs in the suit's crotch, but shoot or fly. He cannot. He's getting the shit out of me. Nice, are you? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm we positive. could. You have nothing to worry about. All right. I have not destroyed any civilians in hours. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a good one. Hey, thank God. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> nothing can go wrong. <laughs> Thomas actually only wears his suit at trade fairs and costume competitions. We persuaded him to test the monster in the local college campus. <laughs> the armor is almost three meters tall, weighs 50 kilograms, and has an arm span of four meters. So, Thomas needs to take regular breaks. And since it's hard for him to get out of armor on his own, his assistants are always there. Oh, I love becoming characters. And, you know, since I'm not very pretty, I like to make pretty things and then people see that. Yeah. This is where Thomas lives. The hobbyist has built countless giant costumes in his basement. He is what's known as a cosplayer. What I enjoy most about costuming is that it gives me a chance to show off my creative side. So, you know, we all have jobs, we all have to pay our bills to some degree or another, but, you know, I've had jobs like I, I owned a pizza shop, I, uh, I owned a car wash, I owned a liquor store, and none of that is something I love. In this case, this is something I love. You know, that allowed me to express that creative side of myself, and very rarely do we get a chance to do that in the real world. His suit has an aluminum frame inside. It's a lot, which creates the powerful impression it has. The lining is made of lightweight foam mats. Thomas cut, sanded and painted each part himself. Every part that is meant to carry weight is made of high-strength polycarbonate. 
and Thomas would get into trouble without his beloved hot glue. The Hulkbuster required $3,000 in materials, so please don't break anything. One, two, three! <laughs> Thank you so much, Jess. I become very closely bonded with the costume. As you put a piece of your soul into something like this when you spend this much time and effort on it. Thomas makes a living from costume competitions. He wins them, of course. Uh, well, I've got many things like this. $10,000, $5,000, dollars $10, and I have many more that... Thomas has to keep improving. His assistants help him with that. He knows what he's good at, and he takes a lot of pride in that. Um, sometimes it comes off a little bit, you know, harsh to people, but, you know, once you get to know him, he's a pretty good guy. These are legs of an older robot costume. Our reporter Martin wants to try them on. Inside the legs, there are 50 centimeter high stilts. They are the secret behind, or better, in Thomas's costumes. This is the only way his robots can reach the three meter mark in height. It's not really that difficult. I can see how this could be fun once you know how to walk in these. I can even do it without help now. But actually, we're here because of the Hulkbusters. What about the torso? Would you allow me to test the torso also? Yes, we'll let you test out the torso. <laughs> You'll cry like a little girl. <laughs> Normally, nobody except for Thomas is allowed to wear his new suit. Now spread. So? Keep on doing. Yes. Uh, the inside of the suit is, let's say, a bit yeah, cluttered. Martin works his way through the building parts and power cables. The Hulkbuster is equipped with a full LED light system. We can go to here and here. The lights, yeah. Some additional lighting. Okay. So I'm in now, and it's insanely heavy. I can only move my arms like this. Hello. Wow, it's heavy. There's so much metal in it. It's a proper exoskeleton, and that's what creates this illusion of size. It's this whole frame built around me. Be careful. There's a step. The step. You crush that, I crush you. <laughs> An absolutely awesome feeling. You do feel a bit bigger, I'd say. Martin isn't allowed to wear the bottom half of the suit. It's too risky. <laughs> the arms are heavy. You're a washy. <laughs> okay. In its full splendor, the Hulkbuster is simply too cool. Thomas has a couple of problems. He could easily fall on his stilts, but he doesn't stop. He enjoys being the center of attention. Hey there, little man. It's okay, buddy. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, actually. Uh, you know, because you get reactions out of people you just can't get in real life. And that is totally incredible. Thomas showed us that nothing is impossible. Certainly, a three-meter robot costume on stilts isn't. And so in my particular case, for a narrow window of time, I get to choose to be a different person. And it could be a, a hero or a comedian, but it's a character I get to play for a little while. And how often in life do you ever actually get to pick who you are? 